All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for another edition of Real Women in Trucking. And today I have the pleasure of sitting down with board member, Ms. Kenyette Godhigh Bell. Ms. Kenyette, how are you today? I'm doing absolutely marvelous. Thanks for asking. How about you, Gloria? I can't complain. It's another great day to be a great day. So today we are going to delve into who Kenyette is, what brought Kenyette to Real Women in Trucking, and a host of other. We're going to also talk about some of the issues that truckers face from Ms. Kenyette's perspective. But before we get into any of that, I like to make sure that we know who we're talking to. So Ms. Kenyette, would you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Kenyette Godhigh Bell, and I am a carrier. I own Bellwether Logistics, and so we're a specialized carrier that uh, runs primarily the Southeast and Midwest. I've been in trucking for four and a half years. I signed up as a birthday present for my 45th birthday in 2017, looking for something that was just a little bit different. I'm not afraid of new opportunities. And so I was a real estate agent before, and I still am, but I'm not doing that so much now. And so I was just looking for something different. And so when I uh, found out about this and started doing research, I thought it was a great idea. I'm in the Tampa Bay area. I have been down here since 2000, but I originally hailed from Indianapolis, Indiana by way of Atlanta, Georgia for middle and high school. So I came down here to go to college at Florida A&M School of Business. And then after graduation, I eventually made my way back to Atlanta and I've been back down in Tampa Bay since 2000. Wow. Now I took a cheat and I read your bio when you sent it over and your story is actually so much more interesting because before you were in Atlanta, You came from somewhere way more interesting. Well, I don't know. It just depends on what you call interesting. Anywhere that isn't Atlanta, Georgia. (laughs) I love Atlanta. I do. Forever I love Atlanta. But um, you come from an immigrant family. Is that correct? No, actually, I don't. So, (laughs) so... The bio that got me considered for Real Women in Trucking's uh, Queen of the Road was where I was described as a cultural immigrant to the industry. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I missed. Oh, wow. I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. I had to read that twice too because someone anonymously nominated me, and so I had to read that twice. And they put that I was a cultural immigrant because I come from a very non-traditional background in regards to trucking. All right. My apologies. Okay. Yeah, so no now worries. that we know that you are a cultural immigrant, meaning you came from a completely different background as what one would call the traditional trucker. And I don't know what a traditional trucker looks like because I feel like a traditional trucker is anyone that decides to operate big rig. Um, I I appreciate (laughs) that um, correction. So you are a carrier. Can you tell me a little bit about the carrier business and what kind of um, freight you guys move from one place to the other? So, I primarily am what they call a power only carrier, which means that I don't own a trailer. Mm -hmm. And so I may go pick up a trailer that's either empty or loaded and take it somewhere else. I have a colleague who's working with me now and he has a refrigerated trailer. So when I'm driving, I like the power only because you can make a parking spot a lot more easily. You don't have to compete for parking, which is a huge issue. And then I also like not always having the responsibility of carrying like this extra weight around. Uh, It's almost like having a backpack on your back everywhere you go. So I, I like the power only space. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So um, what do you love about trucking? Because it's quite the transition to go. I know I have quite a few friends that are in real estate and they Mm -hmm. segue into other money-making opportunities, but it's Mm -hmm. not usually trucking. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. That's true. So with trucking, I really appreciate 
for one, it's just a pretty cool thing. Mm -hmm. It has its own unique cool factor. And I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of such an elite group of lady truckers. So there are almost 300,000 of us out here. And it's, it's a privilege, really. So it's not something that I had considered as a kid or, oh, I always wanted to do this, you know, when I grew up. It was really something that just got on my radar when I found out how doable it was because there was another lady trucker that was telling me about it. And then she showed me a picture of her truck and she was teaming with her husband and she had retired from the state of Florida, but she ended up getting her license because she was riding around with her husband. And he said, you might as well just get your license so we can team. So um, the things that I really appreciate are the freedom and even so, even more so with being a carrier, I have an extra type of freedom. So I have my own truck, I have a company. So there's no one that calls and says, you know, well, how long are you going to be home? And when are you going to move again? I really just have an obligation to whoever I'm working with, which is normally brokers, to make sure that I pick up and deliver on time and safely. Another thing I enjoy about it is the fact that I've been able to see my family in different parts of the country more often than I had before I started driving. So been able to see family and friends in Indianapolis and in Ohio and certainly a lot more in Atlanta and in Tennessee. So I appreciate that about it. And then uh, like I've got a friend in California. So even though I don't drive out to California, but I certainly could and get paid to see my friend. Just okay. take a load out there. That's exciting. So you get to mix business and pleasure all in yeah, one. That's I so can. awesome. That mm -hmm. is awesome. So you are now, it's not a secret that women make up less than 10% of the trucking industry. And while 300,000 women truckers is a really impressive number, it's still yeah. a very, very small percentage of, right. of male, their male counterparts. So with that being said, what challenges have you faced as a woman in trucking? Well, I will say that I do not feel that I have experienced challenges that I was consciously aware of. So I don't expect uh, no's, I don't expect to be treated any differently. So my experience has been a positive one. I train with a great company, Grand Island Express out of Grand Island, Nebraska. They were my first company. I stayed with them almost two years. I had a female trainer who was excellent. So fortunately, I did not have some of the training nightmares and the sexual abuse that goes on. So I've had a great experience. Um, I present myself professionally and I don't walk around truck stops like I'm looking for some action or need some company. So I think that has helped me as well. I have not felt unsafe because if I'm driving at night or overnight, I normally don't get out of the truck unless I'm fueling and then I get right back in or if I have to walk into the truck stop, I'm just going to be aware of my surroundings. So I've been very fortunate and blessed that I haven't had any problems out here. I've really felt more support than, you know, the opposite. Okay. Now that brings us to the fact that you have aligned yourself with real women in trucking. And, and as you uplifted, some women have an actually a surprisingly, astonishingly large number yeah. of women have dealt with um, workplace violence, harassment, um, yes. rape and assault. Um, so why was it important for you to align with real women in trucking? Well, when I was researching the industry for nine months, I was on a quest to find out the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so as I was researching online, I came across Desiree's interview with Dan Rather. Mm -hmm. And so I honed in on that. I started finding as much information as I could about her, about the organization. And so when I drove out to the Great American Truck Show as the last part of my research, 
in 2017, this was in Dallas, Texas, I hung around their booth. And so they were saying, well, hey, you can join uh, for $5 as a student because this was right before I was going to sign up for school. So I was able to hang around Desiree and, and Sonia and Miss Idella and some other people. So it was just a natural fit because they were um, positive influences for me because Desiree definitely was talking about the ugly side of trucking. And so I just felt that I wanted to be a part of what they were doing because I appreciated the educational aspect as well as her just trying to make sure that people are making informed decisions. Absolutely, absolutely. So as you're looking and because you've had this amazing tutelage, now I wanna say as an everyday person, as a lay person who isn't a trucker, I've learned so much from you ladies, um, so much that has opened imagine. my mind. Um, it's enraged. Some of the things I've learned have been enraging and downright frustrating. Um, right. You know, it's just, it's really disheartening to think that there are actual workplaces where people are not safe because of their gender. And it's mm -hmm. even more disconcerting to kind of think about the fact that companies are not doing anything about this. They're kind of playing the shell game with some of the perpetrators mm -hmm. of these problems. So right. if you were having the opportunity to speak to young ladies who are, because they have just lowered the driving age um, for mm -hmm. truckers, what advice would you have for young ladies coming into the trucking industry? So one of the most important things I think is to know that you have a voice and know that you have rights. So when people are doing people things. So if you have someone who is treating you disrespectfully, who is, um, you know, if, if they're, you know, try, do, just being inappropriate, know that you do have a voice, know that you don't have to be silent. And there's always the stigma if you have been raped that it's your fault or you must have done something to bring it on to let them know ahead of time that they haven't that they are children of God and that they deserve to be treated with honor and respect. Uh, in addition to that, I would encourage them to do a lot of research, to do diligence on how to pick a school, how to pick a company. And those are some of the things that I'm able to help people with because I did a lot of research, like I said, nine months, and I interviewed like three trucking schools. And I interviewed like 10 or 12 companies. So I would offer that to them to make sure that they're trying to find out as much information as they can about the schools and about the companies and then have the resources like Real Women in Trucking to be able to reach out if there's something that goes awry. I also would encourage them to never, ever, ever, never, ever go to a company and you have absolutely no money and you have no exit strategy, no way to get on the bus, no way, nobody that can get you home, do not go and depend on the companies to take care of you because that's how you end up in some really, really precarious situations. Absolutely, and that is all mm -hmm. sound sage wisdom. I'm gonna take a moment here to remind our um, viewing audience as you're listening to this advice, um, there are other videos that from the other board members that have been shared with additional advice. And if you wanna be able to find all of this information, you can find Real Women in Trucking on social media at Real Women in Trucking across all social media platforms. And you can also find us um, on the web at realwomenintrucking.org. Um, you can shoot an email and if you have questions, we'll make sure that you get connected with someone that can answer your questions, someone that actually has your best interest at heart because one of the things I think that gets forgotten is um, as I was talking to Michelle Kitchen last night that the trucking schools are in it for money there is there is a tremendous amount of money that's being made and when there's money being made there are marketing efforts that happen those marketing mm -hmm. efforts are a hundred percent driven to attract you but not necessarily yeah. to give you a realistic picture so Make sure that you're connected with Real Women in Trucking and refer us to your friends because we're here to help. 
So we've talked about um, your experiences as a trucker, what led you to be a trucker. And see, now you're my, now you're my most interesting interview because um, you didn't come into trucking. You had a professional background already. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes having that professional background definitely changes how you're able to move about in certain environments. Yeah. Um, because people perceive you different based on how you carry mm -hmm. yourself. And I, and I don't think that that's fair, but it just kind of is. It's true. It, 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 and it is. Um, and yeah. so I am so glad that you have that. And that's kind of shielded you from some of um, the uglier side of things. Cause yeah. From what I hear, it yeah. can be pretty scary. So yeah. um, go ahead. I was just agreeing with you. Yes, that's okay. very true. I think that uh, my business background helps me a lot because I'm able to uh, dress more professionally mm -hmm. and have different conversations. So oftentimes people think that I work at the shipper or receiver mm -hmm. because I don't look like what they think a trucker looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it is very important that the first impression that you give be one that you want to give and one that is going to be of value. So I do walk with my head up. I walk with purpose. And, uh, you know, I know how to have a professional business conversation and I'm respectful. And I think that, that that's captured. And so that translates oftentimes to how I'm treated. And so uh, that is something else that I would say to young ladies or any lady that's coming into this, that you have to be aware of potentially what scent you're giving off, whether it's intentional or not. Absolutely, absolutely. I can't, I can't argue with any of that because I come from a, professional background and and that's one of the things that just women in general until we can get to a point where this is not something we have to deal with we have to kind of govern ourselves to the best of our ability and there's no no implication whatsoever that just because you conduct yourself this way it's going to keep you 100 percent safe right but it does definitely I think in that environment that it would definitely diminish um the likelihood because now you're hyper aware of not yeah. just your surroundings but how you're carrying yourself and like you said the scent that you're giving off because predators what do they thrive on they thrive on scents they hunt you down by sense and yeah. traits and weakness and you don't want to give that off to anyone so yeah i that is all beautifully sound advice mm -hmm. now i like to talk about the heavy stuff first so we can get it out of the way so then sure. we can talk about the fun stuff because um, I don't work in the trucking industry. I've said this multiple mm -hmm. times. I'm going to say it again. I don't. So this is an opportunity for me to learn. And I am the little kid who I was, the little kid in the back seat who would pull, do the little pull thing because I wanted right. to do truck horns. And I was always fascinated by them. And I also now as an adult consumer, I understand how many things are moved by trucks. Like there's nothing that you have that right. isn't truck. So I'm yeah, curious, for sure. what is the most interesting load you haul? Oh, Gloria, I can't think. Oh, yeah. I can't. I, I, oh, well, I will tell you that in the, the power only space, I have pulled a couple of flatbeds. So I pulled... <laughs> I pulled a flatbed of, I don't even know what they were, but they were like these almost triangular things that were really tall. And then they had like chicken wire in the back that was holding in some foam and they were part of a construction project. So then they had them welded onto the flatbed. And so as I'm going up 75 North, there's like foam flying out from behind these things. And so that was very interesting. So then I had to pull over and I had to go to the, the truck stop and you know be on the phone. Then I had to go back. This was to Orlando area for 
the guy who really knows what he's doing to re-secure this. So that was very interesting and just the freight itself. So I had to take that up to Chicago. So then I go and deliver to the inner city, like downtown Chicago, <laughs> having to have the police and the construction workers to allow me to be able to turn around because you know they're doing construction on the other side of the street. And so it was like a theater that they were doing construction on, but it's downtown Chicago. And so it's like tucked in between these other things. So then I'm having to back up onto the sidewalk and all of this stuff. So that was probably the most interesting because I mean, you would have think that I would have been, you know, hauling like, you know, a crane or something. So it was a lot to, <laughs> to uh, get that done so yeah that was very interesting and you know I appreciate the the experience I learned a lot about it I try to stay out of Chicago inner city and you know downtown though <laughs> we're gonna not talk about Chicago Chicago has uh, it has a reputation but it also I have family yeah that, and they're good people yeah um, you know, yeah it, it's, it's one of those you, it is what you make of it kind of situation yeah but as a tourist, I've never been to Chicago. And my friends are always like, you should, you should come, you should come now. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there, there's, there's good things and not so good things about every place. So, you know, they'll just take you to the, the nice fun parts. And the interesting thing is that in Chicago, the difference between a really nice area and an area that's a little depressed is literally like one block. I saw that and I was like, wow, this is a very interesting case study. But yeah, you know, there's a lot to do. It just depends on where you are. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So now um, I always ask this question because sometimes you're in your truck for a couple of days, you're driving overnight yeah. and you're going, mm -hmm. you're on, you're over the road. What do you do to keep yourself entertained while you're driving? I listen to a lot of music. So I have extensive YouTube playlists. Okay. So that's mainly what I do, or I actually like silence. I don't talk on the phone a whole lot. And, um, you know, because it's, it's an interruption of my music. So okay. it's mainly music and silence. You know, I, I think a lot and listen to music. Okay. What kind of music do you listen to? So I'll listen to Christian hip hop old okay. school hip hop. If it's okay. overnight and I need to stay awake, I'll make one of my own like healthy power drinks and I'll do old school hip hop, like public enemy rebel without a pause. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mode D. Hip -hop. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Mode D Roxanne Shante. So yes. old school hip hop. That's what I do overnight, but yeah, I'll have that. I'll have jazz. I'll have gospel. Uh, I have a rock and roll playlist. Uh, I have a couple of country songs. So it just depends on what I'm in the mood for. Oh, I actually have a couple of classical, but I've got to be aware of when I'm playing that so I don't fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely, yeah. people laugh at me because they're like, you don't work to classical music? No, because I will fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, work for to sure. opera, but I won't work to classical music. It's very funny uh -huh. because there's voices. There's voices. Yeah, and right. So there's the crescendo and decrescendo. And then they have, right. I was going to say they have intonations. You have up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So hang on a minute. We've actually talked about everything that I want to talk okay. about. Um, now with regards to real women in trucking, um, mm -hmm. you guys are currently taking members. Yes, ma'am. And if someone wanted to become a member of real women in trucking, how would they go about doing that? What's the membership criteria? What's the process? <laughs> so we have a Facebook group, real women in trucking. And so that would be where you would go to find out more about us. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what the fee is. I think if you're a student, it's very low. When I started 2017, it was like $5 or something for the year. But if you're a professional member, it may be like 50 bucks for the year. Don't completely quote me, but it's not something that's outrageous as if you're like, you know, trying to be a corporate sponsor. So the criteria really is just someone who is um, an advocate 
someone who wants to represent uh, well uh, the issues and is really concerned about the safety of women in trucking and making sure also that we're treated fairly. So the pay, the conditions, just being an advocate and, and being willing to, to represent well and possibly be a voice. Absolutely. So because I've covered all this information and I've done it in a record amount, record. Well, of kudos to you. I, I don't know about that. I don't know how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I didn't say enough. Maybe my answers were too short. No, your answers okay. were perfect. Your yeah. answers were perfect. And you were able to kind of succinctly give me um, your backstory, which I, I find your backstory, again, to be super fascinating because I get to sit with so many different ladies that. Yeah, for sure. Everyone didn't come from the same. And that's so cool to me because yeah, honestly, I never really, I mean, I pass trucks. I think of stay out of your way, stay out of your way. Don't do bonehead yeah. things in front of trucks. Actually, I yeah. usually follow trucks. Like I'll get behind a line of trucks because they'll see the cops before I do on the internet, on yeah. the interstate. Yeah. Um, and you'll, I just kind of let them hidden. guide me. Yeah. And I let them yeah. hang. And I'm never over the speed limit because you guys have that. Um, is it called a governor that yeah. like, controls your speed? A lot of trucks do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Miss Kenya, it was an absolute pleasure to sit down and talk to you today to learn a little bit more about you, to learn a little bit more about trucking in general and why you have decided to align yourself with real women in trucking. Do you have any closing thoughts for our audience? I would just say that. Make sure that you do your research. If you are considering getting into trucking, do your research to first of all, to find out what the life is really like and the reason why you wanna do it because you don't want to be unpleasantly surprised. Sometimes I've found that people that I've consulted with, they wanna get into it because they wanna escape something. So you gotta really take a look at that because that is not going to necessarily solve the problem if you're trying to escape, you know, um, a situation or just kind of what's going on. It just depends. You know, you have to look at the constants and variables in the situation and you may be part of the problem. So you may just be escaping with yourself. Uh, so I think that it is important to look at all sides of this industry or anything else. And if it's something that you're considering, then don't be afraid to do it. Because yeah, you do only live once. You wanna make wise decisions because life is really a vapor and uh, people are thinking that they're going to school or a parade or a grocery store and they're not showing up for dinner. So you wanna make the time count. You want to try different things. So if you're like, I don't know, try to do as much research as you can and then go ahead and take the leap. If you don't like it, maybe you GPS, re-navigate and do something else, but you don't wanna be like, oh, I woulda, shoulda, coulda. Um, so that's one of, those are some of the things that you know I wanna leave people with. And whether it's trucking or anything else, just take stock of what you're good at what you can do, what people say you're good at, what you enjoy doing, and what you can possibly get paid to do. And that's going to equal a lot more fulfillment. Absolutely. Because it's so much better to be fulfilled than to just have an occupation. Absolutely. I, I liken that to just breathing to death or like watching paint dry. Yes, that is so true. Yeah. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, this has been our latest edition of Real Women in Trucking. Thank you for tuning in and we will catch you next time.